Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do a colored pencil artwork here, and I'm using watercolor paper, and I'm using regular color pencils and watercolor pencils. In the real-time two-hour-long tutorial for this bird that's narrated is in Critique Club, so you can check that out if you're a member. If you're not, I will leave a link down below so you can check it out and see if it's for you. I'm starting off by sketching the basic shape of the bird here. I've got kind of like a lumpy uh, oval shape for the body. I've got a half circle for the head, a triangle for the beak. And now I'm putting the wings in, which are kind of like a soft triangles. And as I am working through this illustration, I'm looking at the details and I'm trying to as accurately as I can place the bird um, in the setting. Now, if I notice that something's not quite right, I wanna go right in there and erase any problems. And rather than use my hand to brush away the crumbs, the eraser crumbs, I'm using um, a paintbrush because with watercolor pencils especially, you can end up smearing that if you're not careful. And uh, it, the reason I'm sketching with the watercolor pencils is because if I make a mistake, anything that I can't erase, I can easily dissolve with water. If you notice an error in your drawing, fix it now. Don't keep going because um, you like some parts of it. If you see that something's off, try to fix it as soon as you see it. That's why I like to start with kind of broad shapes to begin with, and I don't uh, go in with details until I'm really sure that I have things where I want them. Now a tip with watercolor pencils is to swatch out your colors because um, they, uh, just like watercolor in pans, they'll look a little different when they're dried down. They could look almost black and then you've got a bright blue. And you wanna see that swatch so you can see what it's gonna look like, colored out, and then also when you add water to it. I'm doing the background here with the watercolor pencils, and if you prefer, you could do this with watercolors. It'd actually be a little bit quicker, but I thought it'd be kind of a fun experiment just to do everything with the pencils. And the pencils I'm using are inexpensive pencils by Pagos Art. They're a new to me company, and I'll be reviewing their watercolor and traditional watercolor out. Oh colored pencils in an upcoming video, probably in a couple of weeks. Um, but I was just trying to put them through their paces on a few illustrations and uh, this was one of the ones I decided to use. But as always, use whatever you have there. These are good pencils for the money, very inexpensive, um, but you don't need to go buy these to do this project. You can use whatever you have. Sometimes I like to use an inexpensive set of pencils because it gives me the, um, especially if I'm working in a sketchbook like I am today, because it gives me that, um, that freedom of not worrying about wasting expensive supplies. I have polychromos. They're probably the most expensive ones I have. I do have a small tin of light fast, like 12 of those, but I can feel a little um, inhibited when I'm using really expensive pencils because I'm like, well, you know, what if I run out before I'm done? Or do I really want to use it on this? What if the artwork is bad? Do I want to waste it on like working in a sketchbook? So I find these less expensive pencils that perform really well to be perfect for sketchbook work because if it's going to stay in a sketchbook, you don't have to worry so much about uh, fading from the light because it's going to be closed in a sketchbook. I really think this effect was really pretty in the background, um, but it was a little lighter than what I wanted it to end up as because as you can see from the reference photo, the bird is lighter than the background. If you look at the screen and you squint your eyes when you're looking at the photograph, um, you're going to see the bird is brighter. And it can be a little confusing when you've got different shapes and different colors. It can be a little confusing to see what's lighter and what's darker, but I really wanted to make sure that that bird stood out. So I'm going over with another layer of pencil and then I'm going to just liquefy it with the water. So I did that in the top part of the picture too, but I didn't record it because I figured that'd be pretty boring. Um, and two layers is probably about it with the watercolor pencils. But if you do more than that, you're going to lift up what you have underneath. So um, I think if you want to more, if you want to darken that background further, then go in with your regular colored pencils and you could even use some solvent with that. And um, and it won't lift up what you have down below because the watercolor pencils um, are not affected by the regular colored pencils. So if I use watercolor, but you wanna use the watercolor on the bottom layer, if you try to use the watercolor over the wax-based pencils, it's just gonna beat up and resist it. So you gotta make sure you go in the proper order there. So watercolor, first layer, and then, or first layer or two, and then you can go in with the regular pencils. Um, I'm also using very little water on my brush when I liquefy, because if you put too much water, you're going to just wash away all your pigments and you don't want to do that. Watercolor pencils lift more than watercolor paints, so it's just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, and the thing is with the watercolor pencils, you're better off to have a slightly stiffer brush than you would use with watercolors, and that makes it lift up even easier. Uh, so you just want a little bit of water. Like I dip my brush and then I scrape off the extra water on the side of my jar, and that gives me like the perfect amount. Sometimes I even pinch the bristles of the brush, as long as I don't have lotion on my hands or anything, and that takes out any excess water. 
and I also want to put a layer of color on the bird uh, with the watercolor pencils because it's just going to give me more layers that I can add on with my traditional color pencils. Now if you were using a surface such as like a sanded paper that's nice and toothy that would take so much pigment that you wouldn't probably want to even bother with the watercolor pencil layer but since I'm using a uh, watercolor paper that's uh, it's cold pressed but it's not super super toothy it's the Renaissance cold press watercolor sketchbook that I was sent to try out um, because of that, I it works really well to have that watercolor as my base layer. But use what you have, um, really exhaust what you can do with the supplies you already own before adding to your collection. Um, it just will make you, it'll make you more creative because you'll think of more ways to do it. But I thought this would be a really fun experiment. And of course, you can do this, do this bottom layer with watercolors. You don't need watercolor pencils. And I'm talking even like, you know, your kids Crayola or praying watercolors. You don't need anything expensive to, to play along and have fun. It may seem silly to be adding all these layers when we're doing an artwork in a sketchbook, but it's really the layering that gives a piece the finished look and the depth. It's building up those base layers and then building up the mid-range and then building up the highlights that um, that makes a painting come to life and look realistic. So if you're ever kind of disappointed with how your artwork's coming out, um, think if you're really done. Think if you can add more to it, if you can layer up more. And sometimes you end up filling the tooth of your paper too soon by coloring too firmly with your pencils. If you ever notice your wrists start to hurt when you're coloring, like from the pressure, try coloring with a less pressure and you'll find that you can layer up more and you can build that richness of color. So what I'm doing here with this dark brown pencil is I am sketching in details here. I want to make sure that um, I have everything placed appropriately, placed correctly. I want to make sure that um, I'm going to be able to see my... Um, my details. Now, if I was painting this with like oil paints or gouache or, or acrylics, I would just have painted everything that kind of light gray, and then I would have just painted the wings kind of like a brown, and then I would have gone in with my um, my highlights and my darks and kind of built up detail that way. But with colored pencil, there's only so many layers you're going to get on that paper, so you're better off kind of preserving areas that you want to remain light, that you want to remain dark. It's kind of like you're making a paint by number or you're making a map. On the um, on the paper where you want everything to go. Now there with a the foot, I was just using a brush with water, and I was lifting out the background where their feet were going to be because I noticed that um, I kind of painted over that area, which is fine because I didn't want to have a gap between the background color and the bird. I would rather have the bird overlap the background a bit. And since watercolor pencil was so easy to lift, I could I could reshape if I needed to and lift out the back the background because that was all the water soluble pencil, um, and they lift really easily. So you want to be very intentional when you're putting down your details and when you're drawing out um, different parts of the bird because it's going to be a little more difficult with colored pencils to get back to that bottom layer again. And there's just a, a shot of my brushes just so you can kind of see. I, I keep that little basket of brushes in my, um, in my workroom and I use it for gouache, watercolor pencil, watercolor crayon, and um, acrylic, any sort of water media like that. But I find my watercolor brushes just hold too much water to use with watercolor pencils that it ends up flooding the paper and just washing away the pigment. Um, so if you have that issue, that's probably why. Now I want you to keep in mind that this painting took about two hours or actually maybe a little bit over two hours with that second layer in the background. So if you're, if you're watching the time lapse and thinking, oh, I'm gonna draw this in 20 minutes, that might be a little unrealistic and you may be disappointed in the amount of uh, detail that you get and the amount of depth there is in your work. So just give it time. And another piece of advice I have when you're working on um, any artwork really, but especially I find color pencil, is that you take breaks because so many times I'm working on a color pencil piece and oftentimes you're working in more detail and you're working smaller than you would if you were painting. Um, you can get like so fixated on the details and you're just thinking this looks like rubbish, this is awful. Um, I've just wasted all this time, it doesn't even look good. Trust me, walk away. When you come back the next day, when you come back in an hour, you are gonna have a whole new perspective and it's gonna look so much better. It's almost like the little um, cobbler's elves from the shoemaker fairy tale comes in and they fix your painting when you're not there because you come back and it looks good. It happens almost every time I work with colored pencils. So I urge you to take a break if you're feeling frustrated um, because if you push through, you might do something that you regret or you might just scrap the whole thing because you're frustrated. Now, I still went in with my watercolor pencils here. I could tell because I liquefied it there. I'd actually thought that I had gone over to colored pencil, but I think I just did color pencil for that drawing, and then I went in with the watercolor pencil for this layer. So we're still working in watercolor pencils. Um, 
At this point now I'm going in with the color pencils, the traditional wax color pencils. You can tell by the green um, barrel on these particular pencils, which makes it easy to tell them apart. I'm going in first with white and adding highlights and trying to preserve any of the lighter areas. Um, now I find that most probably all budget color pencil lines and even most color pencils in general have weak whites. The strongest whites I've found have been, and I haven't tried every pencil in the world, so you know if you have a white pencil that you love, let me know in the comments below. Um, but I find the most opaque white pencils to be the Prismacolor Premier, not the very thin of the color ratio. You want the Prismacolor Premier. They're about $1.35 a piece at Blick, or you can buy them at your local big box art supply stores. Those are my favorite white color pencil. And then also the Derwent Drawing Chinese white color pencil is also very opaque. It's also feels drier. It's not as um, kind of uh, waxy or creamy feeling. So if you prefer that type of pencil, you might want to give that a try. Um, but that's something that I have found as I am working with colored pencils. And you will want a nice bright white colored pencils if you're using any um, budget color pencil set or even a lot of the oil-based pencils that are designed for artists are still, their whites are not that opaque and grabbing a white wax-based pencil is really going to help you out. Um, and now I'm going in with just a dark brown. I'm building those contrasts up. I'm going over what I put with the watercolor pencil. And when you start with the watercolor pencils and you liquefy it down with water, it regains the tooth of the paper. And so you can easily put more layers on with color pencil. I'm using this black to define the talons or the uh, the feet of the bird um, because I also know that it can be hard to get the um, budget colored pencil blacks to be really dark and to stick on top of um, of other colors. So getting those in first where you know you want them is a good idea. Now you can again go in with a Prismacolor black colored pencil. Once you put that down it's very hard to adjust it or stick something on top so I kind of hold that back until the end if I need it. But that's another thing that I would highly recommend that you have on hand. I also have a, have a fondness for the Prismacolor indigo and the Prismacolor terracotta because I find layering those colors make excellent shadows and darks if you don't want to use black. Um, because I really um, was resistant to using black colored pencil because uh, I was so resistant into using black watercolor, but I did find that it's actually quite useful and doesn't seem to make my picture discordant like using a black watercolor would if I hadn't used it previously in the picture. They probably use um, they probably use mixtures of other pigments to make the black pencil. I don't know, um, but that's just what I've found. Uh, I'm just going in and layering different grays, different browns, um, different colors to build up the texture on the bird and um, really trying to help it pop from the background. Now I noticed that the iron area on that the bird is perched on needs to be a bit darker, so I'm going in with some black colored pencil, and again, this is the um, the Pagos Art, the, the budget pencils, because I wanted to try to keep it to is the budget pencils as much as possible, just to kind of see what they're capable of, um, and it worked really well. Now you can go over this with, um, with odorless mineral spirits and liquefy that black if you want to. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, and that's not going to bother any of that watercolor pencil you have underneath. So if you're layering up with your pencils and you're like, oh gee, it's not as smooth as I want. Um, this oil, the, my wax pencils or my oil pencils are adding too much texture and you might be afraid to do anything to it because you're worried you're going to mess up the watercolor underneath. The watercolor is like with mineral spirits, it's just, in, watercolor's invisible to it. It's not gonna bother that first layer you put down. So again, it gives you that more versatility. So I'm not saying go go add this extra thing to your art supply stash for no, no reason. You could do a background in watercolor and still use a water, the oil pastels on top and Gamzol or whatever odorless mineral spirits you like. Um, and it's still not gonna bother that water-based, that watercolor layer underneath, whether it's a watercolor paint or a watercolor pencil. Um, the best supplies to use are the ones you already own, but I do like trying out the budget supplies because um, especially with the holidays rolling around, um, to find affordable art supplies or good quality uh, for maybe your kids, your grandkids, or a friend that, that's getting into adult coloring, something like that. It's just, I think it's nice to know, um, especially if you're kind of contemplating whether you want to invest in a really expensive set of, say you want to buy polychromos. I think those are like, I paid 160, 150 or 60 bucks for mine back like 20 years ago when I got them. And uh, now I think it's probably about $300 to get that set. So that's a big investment versus, you know, well, that would be 120 pencils, but for like 72 pencils for under $30 is much more reasonable. If you're not sure if you're really gonna like the medium colored pencil is not for everyone. It takes a long time to finish a piece. And if you have arthritis, you may find it 
like hurts your hands a bit. Um, I would recommend going with a watercolor pencil if you're trying to decide and you have arthritis or any strength issues. But when you layer up with your pencils, you should not be bearing down hard on your pencil. I'm holding close to the tip more for control than for bearing down. I did not feel like I had to bear down with these pencils at all. Um, and also Prismacolors are nice and soft, so if you had an issue with that. Um, the thing with Prismacolors don't seem to layer as well as a lot of the budget pencils, but I tend to use Prismacolors on top of almost finished painting, so getting a thick pass of color is kind of what I'm after with those. Um, but uh, but these are really nice if you like to layer and use a little bit of pressure. So um, I really want to mention that because if you're discouraged from using colored pencils because you have arthritis uh, or any other strength issues in your hands or in arms, maybe trying a different technique and using a different like a, using odorless mineral spirits or a powder blender or watercolor underneath can make that experience so much nicer for you and can make it so you can use those. Now for my odorless mineral spirits, I keep them in a little mason jar that's got one of those um, clamp down lids with a little rubber seal, like the old fashioned canning jars. That was a souvenir that my niece picked up for me in Las Vegas, but it's perfect. I put a couple cotton balls in there and then I put Gamzol in there. And Gamzol is a truly odorless mineral spirit. I don't like to have a cup of it around because it smells and looks like water and I have pets, so I don't even want to tempt fate that they could get a hold of that. So by putting it in a, um, a jar with cotton balls, it also keeps you from getting too much on your brush or your blending stump when you're using it. Now look at that rich um, kind of steely gray that I'm getting on that wrought iron spot that the bird is perched on. Um, I diluted that. Uh, that oil pencil or the wax-based pencil with my mineral spirits and it didn't bother anything that was underneath. I just can keep building and building and building. Now this is another interesting product. It's not a necessity, but um, I treated myself to, I think pretty much all the brush and pencil products last year when I completed Inktober. And this is a product called Titanium White. So it's basically like ground up, um, super opaque, uh, colored pencil and it is the other product that's in the nail polish looking bottle is called touch up texture and it's a water-based um, adhesive basically that you mix with that titanium white and then you can paint on little details but they won't flake off now if you don't have that you can use a white gel pen or a white paint pen now that might flake off over time but for a sketchbook I would I wouldn't hesitate to use it um, just know that you know it could scratch off and layering over it with colored pencil might be difficult um, and that's what I did for the longest time but I really wanted to try these products so after completing Inktober last year I treated myself to it I'm really glad I did I really like this product the other thing I like about the touch-up texture, which is clear, if I clog the tooth of an area in my painting and I need to go down with more color pencil pigment, what I do is I can just brush that on with a little brush that's included that comes in a little cap so it's like a nail polish bottle. I brush that on the area that's lost its tooth that I need to adjust, let it dry, and then I can color over it as if it's just like textured paper again. Um, I also like their fixatives. The fixatives though are kind of pricey, I think, um, and they do tend to clog so you, so you have to like rinse them out in water if they clog, um, the, the nozzles rather. It's not a big deal, but it's kind of a, you know, kind of drag when you're in the middle of a painting and you're trying to do a layer of a fixative. But all in all, I really like those products. And I have a few um, tutorials on my YouTube channel or demos, I should say. Uh, Lisa over at Lacquery Fine Art uses the color pencil blender, powder blender a lot, and she's got some good demos. But there you have it. There is the finished picture. I really like how it came out. I like those details with the, um, the, uh, touch up texture at the end. I think it really added a lot to it. Um, and I like taking that tape off because it really kind of gives a nice frame and also gives me some perspective. And I said, okay, after I took that tape off, I realized I needed some more warmth in the feathers. They were too white. So I went in with kind of like a yellow ochre colored pencil and just kind of scumbled over some of those white areas because the touch up, touch up texture with titanium white is bright white and I needed to tone some of that down. And that's what I'm doing here. Redefining some darks where I needed. I felt like I needed some crispness here and there and um, you know also went in with a black Prismacolor at this point at the final touches I'm adding some more depth to the eye and any place else where I want to bring sharp focus in I went in with that black pencil mostly around the beak and the eye because that's kind of the focal point I like to draw attention to the face of, um, of animals of birds and that just kind of pulls you in and then you can like travel around the picture and see the other details um, this was so much fun to draw or, or paint, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I hope you give something like this a try. Sometimes it's just so comforting to sit down, um, find something that you know is going to challenge you, and spend some time, um, some time drawing and, and painting it. It's a, it's a really nice medium. 
Um, and of course you could use, you know, you could do adult coloring books. They make some that are very realistic nowadays. If you're choosing one, look for one that's got a good sturdy paper that's got a little bit of grit to it. Um, it doesn't, you just don't want it to feel like copy paper or feel really slick. You want it to feel like it has a little bit of texture. Um, and there are adult coloring books in any matter of themes, um, from nature, botanical art, um, lots of things. You can even print out uh, vintage clip art on your computer and uh, just print it on the paper that you like to draw on. That's another really good option. I'm using the uh, touch-up texture with titanium white to sign my name um, because I, it's it's will stand out better than a gel pen and that pretty much does it. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like a real-time narrated lesson for this, you can check it out in Critique Club. It's $5 a month and you have access to the other 40 tutorials that I have there. Plus, you can upload your work for a critique from me to help you grow as an artist. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.